Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome to my preview of Roma versus Liverpool in the Champions League semi-final second leg which takes place on Wednesday night. Liverpool have a 5-2 lead going into this game. Uh, it should be a wider margin than that, but you know we let two goals slip there right at the end of Anfield. And, you know, off, off the back of that, the tie is somewhat still alive, though we are still massive, massive favourites with the bookmakers. It's 16 to 1 on that we do reach that final in Ukraine on May 26th. Roma are 7 to 1 outsiders to overturn the deficit and cause, you know, one of the biggest semi final upsets in a long, long time as far as second leg. Um, you know, big results being overturned is concerned. Uh, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich will play their second leg before ours, so we'll know exactly where we stand going into the game of Roma in terms of who our opponents would be should we make the final. So it's been, you know, 13 years since we've reached, um, you know, a final of a, of a Champions League. We've been in European finals since uh, in Basel against Sevilla, but this has to be the biggest game um, we've had since maybe 13, 14, the Chelsea game. Uh, it's huge, and you know I think that showed on Saturday with the, with the Dow performance. Uh, minds were elsewhere. Um, one or two were rested, but not. It wasn't even that. It was just the minds of the players were somewhat at rest. It seemed, and yeah, we we, we couldn't keep our focus. But obviously, Wednesday night focus has to be there. Um, it just doesn't get any bigger. I mean, I, I'll probably reiterate that many many times, but this is absolutely monumental. Uh, Roma had a great win at the weekend, you know, they, they won convincingly, so that has kind of uh, sparked some fear in some of our fans, hopefully not into the team though, because they should be beating Kiev at home anyway. Uh, yes, we should be beating Stoke, but there were mitigating circumstances. Our squad is absolutely down to its bare bones, and sometimes when you are uh, in this kind of situation, you do take your eye off the ball in the league, which we shouldn't do, and it happened last season as well, even without any... European exploits, we kind of limped over the line and that's what happened again, so that does outline the problems we've got with the depth in our squad and this obviously isn't helped by the injuries, um, but we have got an 11 man <laughs> an 11 man team on Wednesday that we all know exactly who's going to play, uh, there's going to be no surprises whatsoever unless there's any injuries between now and then, Sadio Mane didn't feature at the weekend but um, you know, unless anything drastic changes he should be fine for this, uh, the rest of the front three are all there, there's a midfield three that's all we've got left. Uh, and there's a back five that are, you know, there are options there for the manager, but uh, uh, you know, you'd be very surprised if he if he tinkered at all there. So we know it's going to be Carrius, Trent, Lovren, Van Dijk, Robertson, Henderson, Vinaldo, Milner, Mane, Salah, Firmino. That is the eleven that have got to go out there and just play the normal game. There's no need to sit back, and I know we won't do that because that's not our that's not our style. I know we're not going to go out there and sink the place up. We could do that. Maybe a maybe a Julio Benitez would have just gone out there and. Got got a nil nil or a one nil defeat, and that would have been that. And um, you know, you might even have been more confident that we'd have come out there with with the with the win uh, in the tie if if we had had one of those managers. But my confidence in Jurgen Klopp remains um, unparalleled. He, we're, we're going to go there and attack. Um, you know, we're going to be sensible. We're going to be streetwise. Henderson and Vinaldo and Milner are very smart midfield players. They're not going to all bomb on, um, which you know maybe an Oxo Chamberlain or or, or Alana might do. Uh, even Emre Chan can be a bit uh, naive with his positioning at times, but these are three solid workman-like midfielders with a lot of class. Um, you know, with great passing range, great work rate. Um, so I, I, I'm trusting those guys to, to go out there and do a job. I'm trusting that defence. That yes, it's not been perfect. You know, we saw at West Brom, although that there had been changes. Um, we've seen at United um, a couple of mistakes, but on the whole, um, it's not often that this back four has conceded three goals, if at all. You know, since since Van Dijk's come in. So, so yeah, you, you, you'd be silly not to be, you know, calm, not overconfident, but just have some faith that the boys are going to go out there and do what they need to do. We're, we're huge favourites for a reason, and, you know, I mean, we, we'd, we'd never hear the last of it if, uh, if, 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 if we did mess this up. Um, there's been a bit of news in the last couple of days, obviously good news on Sunday with Roberto Firmino signing a new five-year deal at Liverpool. This was very positive. Um, you know, this came just after the the Stoke draw to kind of cheer us up. But then after that, came the news this morning that Buvac, uh, Klopp's long-term right-hand man, is you know he's, he's left. Um, we, we don't know whether it's for good. We don't know why. Um, you know, personal reasons is what's been cited. Many are suggesting that there's been a fallout, and that it's not the first time that's happened. Um, their relationship's been fracturous the, the whole time um, 
but you know, and, and it's, it's, it's not good timing for that. Uh, you, you'd think we'd get through this anyway because you know it's not like the manager's walked out; it's, it's his assistant. And yes, I know he's uh, responsible for a lot of the training and you know everything that goes on behind the scenes. And we'll never truly appreciate how much of an impact he, he makes in, until that kind of comes out. Um, but obviously, you cannot doubt his importance to the squad and, and, and to the to the training methods and to the tactics. Um, and Klopp just having someone there that's like-minded that he can bounce ideas off and. You know, yes, dispute with at times, but that's what football's all about. That's why Alex Ferguson always changed his right hand man at Man United just to get fresh ideas. And they probably didn't agree with each other all the time. You know, he had Rennie Mullenstein for a long time, he had Mike Phelan for a long time, uh, Steve McLaren, just to name a few. Um, so, so it's perfectly normal um, for, for for managers to want to have and and to to really recognise the importance of of who's working alongside them and. It, I get the impression that with Bubac, it's not it's not like he's an assistant manager that kind of sits to the back and just helps when needed. He he is right at the forefront with Jurgen Klopp. Uh, was at Mainz, was at Dortmund, um, so it's a great shame to see him leave, uh, especially if it's for good. Um, so yeah, I mean you, you you'd think that we'd have enough anyway, uh, not just to qualify for the final of the Champions League, but to qualify for next season Champions League via finishing in the top four. Obviously, we've got to go to Chelsea and draw or beat Brighton and Hove Albion at home, Brighton who might not be safe by the time that comes around still, so look, we've got a lot of big games even before we can even think about Kiev, um, we need to win or we need to hold on in Rome and we need to get a result against either Chelsea or Brighton, so um, as, a, as a lot, you know, it, it kind of looked a bit more straightforward, at 5-0 against Roma it looked very straightforward, A going to Kiev and B, we didn't really envisage drawing against Stoke, so pressure is on but we have, you know, we've got to live for these situations, we're in, we're in May as of tomorrow, and to find ourselves still in a lot of big games, every game being crucial and for the right reasons for, for challenging at the very top um, is exactly what we want, exactly why we've got Jürgen Klopp in the first place. So if we can get top four back to back for two seasons in a row, then that's absolutely brilliant. And even better, obviously, if the game we're talking about here, Roma, uh, we can get through that, A, with a good result and B, safe and sound back home. That is, um, you know, I don't like to really talk about that. Um, and I know a lot of you watching maybe don't really understand the implications of or, or the severity of the, the situation out there. A lot of you will, and a lot of you commented on my uh, on my Stoke video, um, telling me not to go to Italy, basically, and um, you know insisting that I stay safe. I very much appreciate all that. Um, obviously, that there's a lot of advice out there online for for all of us to to follow and and, and make sure we we stay out of trouble. So yes, we're f I'm flying out on Wednesday morning. Um, and yeah, obviously we're keeping keeping heads down and not doing anything stupid. Uh, I listened to the Anfield Raps podcast with Gav Marcotti and he basically said this is not like any other away day. Don't treat it like one. Don't you know, just use common sense. Don't do anything stupid. Don't be uh, don't be wearing a lava bed on your chest and parading around the city singing and in dangerous areas, which which there are some. But you know, with, with the advice that's out there, and I, I know there's a lot of people that have already travelled out there and are out there right now enjoying themselves, and there's been no trouble from what I've seen. So. That's great, um, and hopefully it all goes smoothly on my night. Hopefully Liverpool can get the results. My prediction, um, you know, I, I think there will be an onslaught. Of course, there will be. It's you know, Roma have to go for it, um, and they've done this before against Barcelona, as we've all been told about many, many times uh, in the build-up to this game. So I think we might go one down, just like we did at City. But I, you know what? I think as soon as we do get on the score sheet, which I do think we will, because we've got so much quality, I can't see a way we don't. I think it might be a similar outcome, so I'm actually going to pick us to win the football match 2-1 and advance by 7 goals to 3 on aggregate and go to Kiev and face Real Madrid, in my opinion, in what will be such a fruitful, um, glamorous, attractive encounter, um, which we'll get to when we get to it. Um, but yeah, very excited for the semi-final second leg, of course. I mean... Uh, you know, I was watching uh, the Istanbul season on TV all the way throughout. I was only what, 12 years old. Uh, watching that Chelsea semi uh, from the comfort of my own home, um, you know, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have done anything to be able to experience that even once, and it's taken this long as an adult to be able to experience it at, at the ground itself. And it's special. It's been a special, special season. I just wanted to continue. I don't even want it to stop in Kiev. I want to go to Estonia for the Super Cup. I want to go to Dubai for the World Cup Championship. And I want Liverpool to dominate the world because, you know, who doesn't want to do that? Um, 
So yeah, there's lots to be excited about. I think we're going to get through. Please leave a comment with your predictions and any thoughts you have on the game. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here and follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook and Instagram is where probably most of the content is going to be over the next few days as I travel to and from Rome. And I'll see you next time.